up until now, you have measured angles in degrees. So here's, say, an angle of about 45 degrees, and here's an angle of about 90 degrees. And if we were asked to define what one degree would be, well, we would say it's one 360th of a circle, because one circle has 360 degrees in it. But we're going to learn now another unit that we can measure angles with. And that unit is, instead of degrees, now radians. And let me explain to you how we define one radian. Say I have a circle. Say this circle has some radius. We'll give it a radius of 4. If I went around its arc length, that same length, 4, and then constructed another radius, so I've got a pie-shaped piece of my circle where the radius is equal to its arc length, then the angle in here is one radian. Okay. So, a very simple definition for one radian. Any circle with some radius r and some arc length between those two radius, the radii, is r, then the angle here would be one radian. So let's take a look and see how radians and degrees are related. A hundred and eighty degrees, which would be that angle right there, is exactly equal to pi radians. Okay, so 180 degrees is the same thing as pi radians. <clears throat> so if 180 degrees is pi radians, then one complete circle, or 360 degrees, would obviously then be 2 pi radians. Okay, so that's the relationship between degrees and radians. One of the things you're going to be asked to do a lot in this course is to convert between degrees and radians. So let's say I have um, 120 degrees, an angle that's 120 degrees, and I want to convert this angle to radians. Well, since the ratio is 180 equals pi, if I were to multiply this degrees by the ratio, pi over 180 degrees, then what my answer will be, will be an answer in radians. You can see that the degree symbols would cancel out when we're doing the multiplying. Right? The degree symbols would cancel out. And I now have an answer that's in radians. I can reduce my fraction. Divide by 10, divide by 2, Actually, we can divide this by 6, can't we? And when I reduce the fraction 120 over 180, I get the answer 2 pi over 3 radians. I'll let you know that when we're working in degrees, we always have the degree symbol. If there is no degree symbol, the units are assumed to be in radians. So if I want to convert degrees to radians, I multiply by pi over 180, and now say I wanted to convert radians to degrees, let's, um, let's say I've got 2.7 radians, and I want to multiply this now by 180 degrees over pi, as this will introduce the degree uh, unit, and working this out on my calculator, I get about 155 degrees. So I just went 2.7 times 180 divided by pi. 
and I get an answer of 155 degrees. So to convert between, to convert degrees to radians times by pi over 180, and to convert from radians to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi. Now another property of radian measure is let's say we've got a circle and let's say we have a radius of 4 again, 4 centimeters. Let's say this angle in here is 1.2 radians. Then the arc length, we'll call that A, arc length is the distance between here and here, okay, so this distance here, the arc length will always equal the radius of your circle times the angle in radians. Okay, so if we have the angle in radians, if we take the angle and we times it by the radius, we get the length of the arc length here. So in our example here, that would simply be 1.2 multiplied by 4, this circle would have an arc length of 4.8 centimeters. So here's a formula that you should, should make sure you know. It's not on your Math 12 formula sheet, but just remember that arc length equals radius times the angle in radians. So a, a typical exam question on this topic might look something like this. They'll say, what's the arc length if we have a circle with an angle of 85 degrees and a radius of 3? Well, we can't, we can't find out the arc length until we know what this angle, this is usually a symbol for angle, by the way, if you don't know. It's a Greek symbol, uh, Greek letter theta, radius times theta. So if you see theta, we're talking about the angle. But this angle is in degrees. And uh, before we can use this formula, we need to make sure it's in radians. So, to convert to radians, I'm going to multiply by pi over 180. And working that out on my calculator, 85 times pi divided by 180, I get about 1.48. So, 3 times 1.48 is... 4.45 and let's assume we're working with centimeters here again. So arc length is radius times theta. Just make sure that your angle theta is in degrees. Sorry, is in radians. Let's take a look at how we would draw angles in standard position. So here's our x-y axis. Okay, I will let you know that this positive x-axis here, right here, is what we call our initial arm. Okay, the initial arm is right here. The initial arm just means all angles are measured from this line here, from our initial arm. So if I were to draw the angle 45 degrees, it would look like this. So I measure 45 degrees from my initial arm. If this is the initial arm, then this line here must be the terminal arm. This is the terminal arm. I think this is where the, the angle ended up. So I started here, I rotated my initial arm to end up here measuring an angle of 45 degrees. Positive angles trouble with a pen there. Positive angles go measured this way. We could also measure a negative angle. We would simply end up going this way in a clockwise direction. So positive 45 would be in a counterclockwise rotation. Negative 45, I would measure 45 degrees in a clockwise rotation. So because we generally work with positive angles, 
then we would call this quadrant 1, this quadrant 2, because we would rotate next into this quadrant, this quadrant 3, and this quadrant 4. So quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's consider this example. Draw the angle 120 degrees in standard position. Okay, so 120 degrees is positive. I'm starting from here. There's 90. So this is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. 270 degrees. 360 degrees. 120 degrees would be somewhere about here. Angle theta is 120 degrees. So there's 120 degrees in standard position. Now a couple other terms we, we need to be familiar with. One of them is coterminal. Coterminal. Co-terminal, as the word suggests, simply means an, another angle that would end up in the same position as this co-terminal angle, this, ang this terminal angle right here. So, could we come up with another angle that would have the exact same looking terminal arm? Well, the easiest thing to do is if we've gone 120, just go around once more. Okay, if I went all the way around another, what, 360 degrees? Then the angle 480 degrees, we would say would be coterminal with 120. Okay. If I went 480 degrees, that would be 360 once around, plus another 120, I'd end up right here. Okay, so coterminal angles are very simple to find. We just add multiples of 360 to 120. If I wanted another coterminal angle, I could add another 360. Or another 360. I just keep spinning it around. Alternatively, if I'm at 120, I could back up or minus 360 degrees and I would end up at the same spot as well. So a coterminal angle, we simply add or subtract any multiples of 360 and we'll always end up in the same position. Let's review coterminal angles. Another term we need to know is a reference angle. Reference angle is defined to be the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. And it's the one that's always going to be less than or equal to 90 degrees. So the coterminal, or sorry, the reference angle would be this one right here. This would be my reference angle. And how would I determine what that is? Well, if from here to here is 120 degrees, and I know all the way to here is 180 degrees, then what's missing must be the 60 degrees, because 120 plus 60 makes the 180. So the reference angle would be 60 degrees. Let's look at one more example. We'll do this one in, in radians. So draw negative 4 pi over 3 in standard position. Well, we're working in radians, so this is 0. We said 180 degrees, if you remember back, was the same thing as pi radians. So if this is a pi radians, then this must be half pi, or pi over 2, and this is 1 pi over 2, and 2 pi over 2, then this must be 3 pi over 2, and of course, one complete circle is 360 degrees, or 2 pi radians. Now, this angle is negative, so I'm going to start here on my initial arm, and I'm going to go this direction, and this is 4 pi over 3. <clears throat> 4 pi over 3 is, of course, the same as 1 and a third pi. 3 goes into 4 one time and leaves one third left. So if I'm drawing, I'm going to draw this. 
I have to figure out which quadrant I'm in. This is 1 and a third pi. Well, there's 1 pi from here to here. And then I need to go a third of the next pi. That should end up about there. So here's, here's 1 pi from here to here, because 180 degrees is pi. And then I need to go a third of the next pi. Well, that would be about a third of the way there. So here's my angle, negative 4 pi over 3. And if I want to find one that's coterminal, coterminal to this one, let's just say we were asked that, give an angle that's coterminal to this. Well, remember, when we're working in degrees, all we need to do is add or subtract multiples of 360 degrees. Well, in this case, we're dealing with radians. One complete circle is 2 pi. So, if I'm sitting here and I added 2 pi to this angle, then I'm going to end up being in the same place because I've just simply gone around the circle once more. Uh, in order to do this question, I need to get common denominators. Lots of good fraction work here. So, this is in denominator over 3. That would make this 6 pi over 3. And negative 4 pi is over 3 is plus 6 pi over 3. A coterminal angle would be 2 pi over 3. Hope you're good with your fractions. 2 pi over 3. And if I was asked to determine the reference angle, well, the reference angle would be the angle between the terminal arm and the x-axis. That's this one right here. And remember we said this was the same as 1 and a third pi? Well, if this is 1 pi, and then I went a third of the pi, then obviously the reference angle would be pi over 3.